really feel like the Good Things album is our best album yet. It's our fourth album, and you know, it's it's interesting. You know, our first album. They say you have your entire life to work on your first album, and then every album after that, you've got about two weeks to finish the album. But this one was a you know a unique circumstance in which the world kind of shut down for a year and a half. We were pulled off the road, and we had nothing but time on our hands to work on this album. You know, we never stopped writing after we turned in our third album. But this one, we just had pretty much, that's all, that was all we had to focus on, to just work on the songs, to just keep editing and editing and editing, leave no stone unturned in the studio. And we really pushed ourselves to elevate. We feel like radio deserves that, our fans deserve that, our team deserves the best that we can possibly be. And just continue to try to push the bar. And, uh, you know, for ourselves too, creatively. And we feel like we really tapped into it. We knew when it was done and we were like, this is it, this is the one. And uh, man, we're, we're so excited for our fans to hear it. Not only do we feel like it's our best album yet, but it's been, three years since the last album so it's uh it's good to have fresh material out there just in time to get back on the road i think all of our albums are going to have we, we have to pull from the things that we know that's how we work as as writers and whether it's right now or things that we've gone through in the past obviously you know if it was all right now if you listen to this album front to back it would be a roller coaster of a life right now there's we got sad songs we got happy songs we got ballads, we got up tempo, and you know this is just kind of things that we know. And there are songs on there like right now, like One Direction is a very special song uh, to both of us. But I, you know, I I relate to that with my kids. You know, I think that that is that song title was written down because you know Dan had looked at his dog and, and saw that you know she was getting white in the face and, and realizing that time only moves in one direction. But for us, as we were writing that song, there was something special to remember that. Even though time only moves in one direction, that's what makes it so special, is that the time that we're given is, is precious, and so we have to do with that what we will. And, and for us, it just means appreciating the moments a lot more and being able to take the time to to realize how great it is to spend time with people that we love. And But yeah, I mean, I mean there's there's songs on here, even the sad songs are things that you know we've gone through in the past or our co-writers have gone through in the past. So it was really fun. As story, you know, we, we were able to be storytellers as artists, and it's always fun to step into that role. and you know, sing about something that you may not necessarily be going through at this time, but something that you can personally relate to and, and kind of convey that and be able to kind of convey that emotion, uh, you know, to the fans and for people who are going through that right now. It's always, uh, you know, songs are funny in that way where it's like, even if you're not going through it right now, you know, you've definitely probably gone through it in the past and that's just, you know, music and it helps you, helps you cope. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I put a lot of pressure on myself with those kind of things. We try to remind ourselves that, you know, you can't live and die by awards. You know, there's a lot that goes into it and uh, a lot of factors that happen behind the scenes. But all we can do is just try to keep making the best music possible and uh, just working hard, man. You know, being good to our fans, being good to people in the music industry. And uh, if it's meant to happen to us, then it will. And, and we feel, we feel you know, confident with this album cycle. We feel like we've got the best material of our career. So fingers crossed, you never know. But uh, yeah, man, I, I'd be lying if I said I didn't look up what the, the most, the longest streak of wins in a single category is. I think it's maybe four, so who knows? I don't want to jinx it. I think it was like Lenny Kravitz won four in a row in the same category. So yeah, we'll see. But hey, we'll take it, man. We've won three Grammys, so that's a big win for us. And it's awesome. You know, I feel like obviously there's a lot of connections between, you know, Nashville and L.A., our two worlds, you know, pop and country are very, you know, they're colliding, you know, more so now than they ever have. And it's it's really fun. I think it's great for the genre, you know, being able to kind of go out of your comfort zone of, of, of a different world. You know, they definitely live in a different world than we do. And a lot of times, you know, pop stars and, and country stars is, you know, we live in Nashville and it's just a different world than, than L.A. But it's so much fun to get in there and to be able to, you know, collaborate with those guys. And they're not just, you know, and, and ladies, and they're they're not just, you know, some artists that are, you know, they're very talented people. To get in the writer's room with Sean Mendez is like, you know, you see him and you're like, man, he's a superstar, but what is he really like behind the scenes? And I mean, honestly, never met, you know, another, a, a more nice human being in my entire life. He's just such a great guy, but in, insanely talented. I think anyone who's ever worked with him would, would say that. He's just so talented. And he really is that good as, as a writer. And, uh, as a as a guitarist and uh, just a musician, he's so talented. So him and Justin Bieber and Taylor Parks, all just incredible. And for us, I think when you write with people that are just insanely talented like that, it only makes you better as a writer. So we try to be sponges and take things and, and techniques, you know, from them and be able to learn and, and grow as artists and songwriters.
Yeah, I mean, that one kind of happened in reverse. We were out on the road. We were playing a county fair, a festival somewhere, and there was a trailer. We had a couple buddies out writing that weekend, and Jordan Reynolds and Andy Albert, who we wrote a bunch of songs on the album with. And Jordan, you know, sat down at the keyboard and started playing this little riff, you know, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one thing on the piano. And we were like, that's a vibe. That's cool. And we kind of just freestyled this hook over it. And, you know, the song wrote itself. And, you know, a couple hours later, we had this demo. We weren't really thinking about it. We listened back. We were like, man, that, that vibe, you know, obviously it's we listened to it, we're like, it reminds me of something. Oh, it kind of reminds me of Lean On Me. So I think what happened when he was playing that piano, we were subconsciously maybe like, that, it sounds amazing. We love it. Why do we like it so much? It's like familiar in the best way. So we were like, you know, it's kind of got a bit of a Lean On Me sort of piano inversion voicing thing. And, you know, at that point, we were like, you know, we were influenced by Bill Withers, who's like one of the most incredibly talented artists to ever do it, you know? And that song is just timeless, iconic song. So. Maybe it was in the back of our heads when we were writing it, and we, we thought it was the right thing to do. We reached out, and we were like, hey, we've got this song. You know, it was kind of indirectly inspired by Lean On Me. We would like to offer you guys some publishing on it. And, uh, you know, it, it all worked out. And at the end of the day, it's cool to have a writing credit to our names with Bill Withers on it. You know, it's awesome, and it's one of our favorite songs on the album. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's special. We were kind of subconsciously influenced by that, and, uh, yeah. Our fans, man. We've been away for so long, and when you don't, when you, you're so used to being on the road and being out there and, and feeling that energy from your fans, and we can really kind of judge what songs are, are really going over, you know, with our fans. And as a song's climbing the charts on the radio, you can feel that energy of that song just elevate every single show. And so without having that, it's just, it's very difficult to, you know, we had I Should Probably Go to Bed um, that we had never played live ever. And so as it <laughs> went to number one, we had never heard a crowd sing it or experience that in a live setting. So we're just so excited to get out there and to be able to hear songs like that that went up the charts without us ever you know, being, able, being able to play that song live and experience it with our fans. Like, honestly, 10,000 hours, we never really got to do that song live. You know, glad you exist and I should probably go to bed. So, and now these new songs. We played, we played a show uh, a couple weeks ago and they're already singing the brand new songs like Lying and Good Things, which is really exciting for us. So we can't wait to get out there, man, and just can't wait to see their smiling faces. And I think people are, are really ready for live music again.